Hi everybody, I am Grace. I am the Adult Services Librarian at the Parma Public Library. If you're joining us today, you're probably interested in learning about bullet journals. So, I have brought some journals with me today to show you the way that I set up mine, and we're gonna go through a presentation about bullet journaling and some suggestions and creative ways that you can set up your bullet journal. So thank you for being here today. I am speaking right now and will share my presentation with you. And then later in the recording, I will turn on my demonstration video and you'll be able to actually see my notebook and I will go through some of that as well. So let's get ready to learn. Bullet journaling. Let's get creative. Are you ready? Resources. One of the biggest things I would suggest if you're interested in learning more about bullet journals after this presentation is to use the library system. There are books about bullet journaling in the library system. We do have some coming here to Parma and you can also place holds on some from other local libraries. So I've shown some pictures here of different bullet journaling or journaling books. The bullet journal method by Ryder Carroll is the original book. He is the creator of the bullet journal system. And the tagline is track the past, order the present and design the future. Ryder Carroll called his bullet journal process the analog system for the digital age. I am not gonna play this bullet journal video on bulletjournal.com today just to respect the, the copyright of that video. However, you are welcome to go on to bulletjournal.com if you're interested in learning more about this analog process. It, the video there is about four minutes long, so it is a very quick tutorial on how you can set up your bullet journal if you're interested in the simple and bulleting aspect of it. So using your library system, you can search bullet journal and we will talk a little bit later about hand lettering if you're interested in making your journal more designy and creating uh, hand lettering titles. So here are some other pictures, Journal Me Organized, How to Bullet Plan, and Beyond Bullets. So there are multiple books that you can find to help you learn more about this. All right. So here is a quick history of how the analog bullet system works. So a lot of things are organized by tasks. So there's a picture on the right side here. Tasks are noted with a dot or a bullet. So call landlord on this list has a bullet next to it. And originally all the things on this list had a bullet as well, plan vacation, task list item, dinner next month. So an X represents a task completed. So once you do that bulleted task, you cross it off. Task migrated means that it's moving on to a day or a time in the future. Task scheduled means that you're going to schedule it for a different time. So you would put that back on what they call a future log. So for example, this person finished planning their vacation on April 5th, so that got crossed off. Dinner with FM, which may be his family next month, they are putting onto their future log so they remember to complete that task in the future. And a task migrated means it's getting pushed to the next day. Events are noted with a circle and those dashes are noted for just a note or information that is important. So we are not gonna go through a lot of the future log, monthly log, and daily log 
today, but like I said, you are welcome to check out that video at bulletjournal.com. We will be talking more about the creative aspect of the bullet journaling. So let's move on. What your bullet journal can become. It can be a planner to help you stay organized. So this could be, you know, daily or monthly. I lay out a month at a time and then I end up at the end of the year having a yearly planner. It can be a tracker for different things, for goals that you have or habits that you want to keep track of. You can create lists or logs. You can make space for art or doodles or quotes or um, even photos or memories. So this can be anything you want. And the list here is not even comprehensive. There is so much more you can do with this. But we will go through some more detail about these options. So what are spreads? So bullet journals are often organized in spreads. So a spread is basically a layout on our page. They usually have a title or a theme and you can set these up in a creative way. They can be list organized though or they can be more visual. So as you can see in these pictures, the top picture has the quote on the right side which has detailing and flowers and designs around it. And the books to read list is organized very visually with this, this bookcase spread. So conversely, there's a movies list here, and that is just a title at the top of the page with a checklist underneath. So it can be simple or complex. It can be, like I said, visual or more of a list. And there are so many examples. So now we are gonna look at the types of spreads. There is year at a glance, or that can also represent your future log if you're using the, the analog system of this. So it highlights important events, birthdays, anything you know you have coming up through the entire year. A daily log or a weekly log, which has your tasks, events, appointments, etc., that you need to compile or do or keep track of. So there are special lists like you saw on the slide before, books to read, movies to see, trackers I mentioned. You can do this with spending and saving too, which I have found very useful. And goals. So setting up some goals for yourself, whether that's monthly, yearly, or even weekly. But again, your journal is about what you want to accomplish and what you want to see. So you can create pages for anything. Let's see some examples. Here is a daily log. On the left side, we have a simple log, uh, just written in pen or pencil with uh, check boxes for daily tasks. So as you can see, there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday through the week. So I think this person is using their daily log for their work routine. And the layout is very similar on the right picture, um, but it is just more designy and this person put more uh, color and artistry into it. So it can be whatever you prefer, whatever you are comfortable with, and whatever is organized in a way that is effective for you. Do not think that your bullet journal has to look like this right picture. If you wanted to and that's something you, you aspire to have, then that is wonderful. But the, the process of bullet journaling also works in this simple aspect. Both of these uh, daily logs are horizontal. All these uh, rectangles for each day are horizontal. I will show you mine later. I like to use uh, vertical spaces because I like to view my tasks chronologically from the beginning to the end of my day. All right, some special lists. There's favorite quotes, chores, books to read, food and meal prep lists. Um, I will show you my movie list later, house projects list. So there's a bunch of different ways to organize and keep track of things that are important to you. The books list, for example, uh, there's book spines here. And once the person reads a book, they color in the spine. So at the end of all those titles, they'll have a beautiful, colorful stack of books. 
And again, these can be simpler or complex. The chores list is fairly simple. Um, this person did just design some squares that they labeled and wrote lists inside them. And then on the food and meal prep list and the quotes, you can see some more of that detailed hand lettering, which we will briefly touch on later. Next, we have a habit tracker. So this is usually done monthly. And there are a couple ways to do this. On the left side, there is a calendar for each habit. As you can see in that picture, there's reading, studying, writing, walking, 5,000 steps. And so this person has created a monthly calendar under each habit. So they would either highlight or circle or cross off all the days in that monthly calendar that they have done something. In the right picture, the habit tracker is doing the same thing. It's just laid out differently. So this is a grid with all the habits in a list laid out in one monthly calendar. I know I do keep track of habits that I want to do more of. So for example, walking or exercising. You know, if I notice a gap in my tracker for a while, it means I have to get on it and do it some more. So it is a visual way to, to really see what you're doing every day. A spending and saving tracker. Again, there's multiple ways to do this. Um, there's a spending log that you can do for, for paying bills. That's on the right side of the, the picture here, sort of like a, a budget, right? There's item goals and you know even a total monetary goal if you just want to save a certain amount that you have in a lump sum. I really like this middle picture here for the item goals because you can keep track of specific things you want to save for. So if you have a trip, uh, home repairs, in this picture the person wants to save for a hot tub, a dog fence, and they have their little boxes sketched out by number of dollars. So they color in each box, whether by $50 or $100 or whatever you want to do to reach that final goal of that full, that full strip there. Another example is a routine. If you know you have a routine that you want to stick to every morning or every week, this is another way to lay that out. There's scheduled routines like in the middle and right pictures and a, a visual morning routine as well. Goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, and daily goals. So daily goals, uh, this example here is drinking eight cups of water every day, which is a wonderful goal to have. So it looks like they use that uh, strip and put it on each week as they go through. That looks removable. That is a very cool idea. So monthly goals. You maybe have a certain number of books you want to read every month or a certain number of activities you want to do. So goal pages are also a way to, to look back at your idea of what you want to accomplish and you know, use that as inspiration. I usually do uh, just uh, bigger yearly goals every year at the start of my year. Supplies, okay. There are so, so many supplies you can use in your bullet journal. Some people do create almost a scrapbook in their journal, and you can use any kind of journal. If you attended the live event for this uh, presentation, you may have picked up a small journal to get you started, and those were blank pages. Um, blank pages can be tricky. It depends on your preference. I like to use a dotted journal but there's also grid and line journals as well. You can use any type of art instruments, pens, markers, colored pencils, uh, paint pens, brush pens, and scrapbook accessor accessories, excuse me, as well. So washi tape I'm gonna show you today. Um, there are some people that use pictures or Polaroids that they glue into their journals, scrapbook pieces, so there are so, so many ways to do this. 
So I listed some book resources at the beginning, but these are some tutorials and ideas if you're interested in, in seeing more pictures of, of bullet journal spreads and watching videos of bullet journal demonstrations. There are so many YouTube tutorials on this and Pinterest ideas. It really is, it really is a rabbit hole. So again, I'm not gonna show these videos that I have linked down here today, um, but you can find them on 17, uh, YouTube. Yeah, I've just linked a couple specific YouTube videos, but you can search uh, bullet journaling, bullet journal spreads, bullet journal demonstrations, and you will find plenty of inspiration. So, <laughs> because we're in a live presentation, I can't really, or we're not in a live presentation, we're in a recorded presentation. Um, I'm not going to ask for questions live, obviously, but you are always welcome to comment any questions uh, under the video if you would like, and I can monitor those in the future and try to get back to you. So we're going to try our own. And if you are at home just watching this, you know, you don't have to start doing this right now, but I'm going to try my own and I'm going to show you and demonstrate some of these spreads that I have done. So things to remember before we do this. You do not have to be an artist to make a bullet journal work for you. I know it seems a little bit overwhelming. There's all these designs and creativity and, and the writing looks professional and fancy. This is about you. We don't want this to be stressful. We don't want this to be overwhelming. We want this to be something that inspires you that allows you to be creative and is efficient and practical for your life. So designs can evolve. You can start simple and decide that, you know, I wanna add a little bit more to this and make it more complex. If you feel stressed out, you can simplify it. And if you need inspiration, you can go on the internet. I wrote check Google, um, but like I said too, there are plenty of resources um, in book form and on YouTube and, and many videos and tutorials that you can find. And this journal is yours. Yours, yours, yours. It doesn't have to live up or match up to anyone else's journal. This is about what works for you. So I am gonna throw my contact information up here for a minute, even though this presentation is not quite over. Um, but if you have any questions, you can email me or call me. Um, so I am, again, from the Parma Public Library, Grace Engelbrecht, so my information is there if you wanna jot that down or pause, pause the video. <laughs> and now that our PowerPoint is over, I am gonna demonstrate some spreads. Okay, so I am gonna turn my demonstration video on and I hope you will all be able to see it. Okay, so here's my, <laughs> I have my phone holder here. There we go. I'm gonna do the best I can, everybody. So I have my journals with me today. Some other supplies you might consider are, you know, colors, something to write or draw with. I'm using markers. I do use colored pencils sometimes. I like using marker and colored pencil together. I have scissors, which I'm really only gonna use to cut my washi tape, but you might be cutting scrap paper or other pieces to put in your journal. Pen and pencil. Definitely need a ruler, especially if you have a blank journal. I use a dotted journal, but I am gonna use my ruler anyway to measure things out equally because I am a little bit particular about that. So I'm also gonna show you blank journal today versus um, our dotted journal here. You can see those dots. And I also have some washi tape. So I have thin washi tape today and I have thick washi tape. So I'm gonna pin the demonstration video so hopefully everyone will be able to see it nice and large on their recording and I'm gonna keep going here. So here is some things I'm going to demonstrate. Here are some things I'm going to demonstrate. 
Let me get my journal open here. Here's an index, okay? So your journal might come with an index. I stopped using my index a while ago, as you can tell. It just wasn't helpful for me personally to look back at this page. <laughs> but um, this journal that I have is a Lecterm 1917 brand. And you don't have to get a name brand journal. This one is hardcover. I like it because I carry it around with me every single day. This journal is a soft cover, so you can find these. They're just a few dollars. They are thinner on um, the one that I have, but they are good if you're not doing full years planning. They are good for um, lists. I use this one as a movie journal. So there's only so many new movies I watch every year, so I have a lot of space in there. And like I said, if you were part of this presentation originally, or um, if you're interested as well, there are also blank journals. So there's no lines, grids, or dots at all. So I'm going to show you what my daily log looks like. Or in this case, it's kind of a, in a sense a weekly log because I, I have a box for every day. of the week. So this is coming up in two weeks from now. So every month I measure out my days ahead of time. So in my data journal I know that each day is a width of nine dots. So I, am, I measure those out so I have an entire week in one spread. And as we saw at the beginning the original bullet journal method has tasks um, listed as a bullet. You don't have to use a bullet. I like to use boxes because when I am done with something, I check it off. So that's what works for me. That's what I prefer to do. That is more visual for when I know I've completed something. If I don't get this done, I give it a circle like this and I rewrite it onto the next day that I know that I still have to get that done or accomplish that. So I will erase this. I'm using pencil because this is not for a couple weeks. So in reality, I, I will get that completed. <laughs> so I also put events and appointments and things on my journal as well. So tasks, for me, I use check boxes. If I have an event coming up, um, so Christmas, I'm going to put a little flower. I've just used flowers for my events just because that's something I started at one point and continued. So I'm going to write family Christmas Zoom call on Christmas Day. So I use flowers for events. I use boxes for tasks that need completing. And so events, you know, I, I do, you know, family and personal events, but also um, appointments and things like that, I also use the flower for. And I probably can find one to show you. So here, I had to babysit. So I have flowers listed there as well. And as you can see, across each week, I do have a heading with the dates on it. I put the month in the middle and the date at the beginning of the week and the date at the end of that week. This is very simple. Usually I have more decoration in the, inside the month there. Um, December, I just didn't get to it. <laughs> um, but normally I, I would have a little bit more flair on those pages. So for example, I have wreaths here from a couple weeks ago. So that is what my daily slash weekly spread looks like.
Next, I'm going to show you some of my special logs. So at the beginning of the year, I create a books read log. Book goals, this one is called. <laughs> so I start with all of these blank spines. And as I read something, I write the title and the date I finished it, and I color it in. If I'm in the middle of reading something, sometimes I write the title and then I don't color it in until I finish. So this is a really simple spread that you can do. It's just a rectangle frame. And I've used my dots to measure out some shelves and drew some rectangles as the book spines. So this is a very 2D layout. Um, I could have curved the book spines or decorated them a little bit more to look 3D, but this is what I did at the beginning of my 2020 year. So what else can I show you? Yes, the movie journal. So like I said, I use a different journal for my movies just because I am a movie fan and I watch a lot of them. So I keep track of them and I give them a rating and write down when I watched them. So here is my spread for 2020 movies to see. Actually, let me go to this page before here. Movie journal 2020. So my shading here doesn't look great, but you know, I, I consider myself a bit of an amateur. So again, it's just whatever you're happy with. It doesn't have to live up to any standard of what anyone else's journal looks like. And I drew this little popcorn here. So as you can see, I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. This is also a dotted journal, but I don't use the dots as much for my movie titles. I just sort of draw across the page as I feel I would like to. So things aren't really measured out the same way as my planner. So here is my list of movies to see. I'm sure this list is incomplete for many of us <laughs> this year with things not being released in theaters until recently. But this is what I'm gonna demonstrate later. Uh, this is my you know, film strips here. And I think it looks very nice, it looks clean, but it also looks artsy and it didn't take me a lot of time, right? These are all just rectangles that I measured out and colored in to look like the film strips. So at the beginning of the year, I write down movies I'm looking forward to seeing. And then once I see them, they get colored in. So that's my list at the beginning of the year. And then each new movie I see that I have not seen before, I have a page for. So I saw Frozen 2 on March 17, 2020. So I wrote down how I watched it or who I watched it with. I gave it the title, the date, my rating, and then sometimes I write a little blurb about it. And then I give it a design or a theme or a decoration. So because it's Frozen 2, I drew some little snowflakes and snow dots on there. I saw The Matrix for the first time in April. So my design for this is all these matrixy equation things <laughs> that I drew across the page. I didn't really love The Matrix, but uh, I put my rating in here. And so my theme for this is a little more, um, you know, I have the, the block letters um, in this background on here. <laughs> So I've seen a lot of movies. <laughs> so what I'm going to do today is demonstrate some of these spreads for you. So I've shown them to you, we've talked about them in the presentation, but now we'll see how you can actually set this up for yourself. So I'm going to open the blank journal. I'm going to use that for now since I'm not used to it. And I'm going to use my ruler. So if I were to set up a new weekly spread, or if you wanna do this and set up a weekly spread, you can do this however you want. Like I showed you, I have my days listed vertically. I have vertical boxes for each day. You can do this horizontally or vertically if you want. 
So I'm not really measuring things against a dot or a grid because this journal is blank. So I am gonna eyeball this a little bit, um, but you are welcome to measure down your page as you would like. So I'm gonna do this a little bit differently than my journal, just so you can see different options. So if I was setting up January, I like to use cursive sometimes. So I'm gonna write January as my heading. And I'm gonna do this in pencil for now. And I'm gonna go over it in marker later. And I know that this is gonna be one whole week. So that week in January, that first full week in January, is starts on Monday the 4th. I like to put my weekend together at the end of my week, but you're welcome to start your week on Sunday. Um, but then I know I would have a full box for Sunday when I don't need that room. So I go Monday through Friday and put my Saturday and Sunday weekend at the end. So I'm going to start Monday for this. And my page across here is about 11 inches. And I need six days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday are together. So that's going to be, hmm, about an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters. So I'm going to, let's do an inch and three quarters here. <laughs> so, and again, you don't have to get this particular. I am measuring it out because I like even boxes. <laughs> so an inch and three quarters, an inch and three quarters. Okay, so that's close. That's gonna almost take me to my seam there. Let's do a little closer to, closer to two inches. Okay, and then I'm gonna make some lines. And these are going to end up being my days of the week. And I'm going to split up my Saturday and Sunday. And I'll add another little ribbon here too. Okay, so this will be Monday, one, what did I say, the fourth, <laughs> Tuesday, one, five, and so on. So that's how I'm going to lay out my week. And then if I want to add some spice to this page, I can add color. I can add some design. So I'm gonna go over my cursive in blue and you can always erase these pencil marks later if you didn't want them showing underneath your marker. And you know what? I have some winter washi tape. So I'm gonna use that to highlight the corners of my page to give it a little fancy factor here. So I have some snowflake washi tape. I also have some glittery blue washi tape. So I'm gonna use those to complement each other and put on my page. So I wanna give it kind of a, a scrapbook type feel. So I can put blue across here with a snowflake accent. And I can do the same thing on the other side. I appreciate you all sticking with me. To learn more about how to add some flair to your bullet journal. Okay. 
Okay. So I have my little bit of accent there. Very nice. Let's go to a new page and try something else. I'm going to show you how to do the movie strip layout. Like I said, it is pretty simple. We're just going to measure out some rectangles. So for this, I'm just going to use the top and the bottom of my ruler because I think that's already a pretty nice width for a movie strip here. And again, I could be doing this in marker. I'm doing it in pencil for right now and I can trim over it with marker. So I have a strip there and I'm going to add a bottom and the top of the strip. With some framing in between. So yes, it's going to look like I have a lot of overlapping lines, but I can erase those out later or color over them. So I'm going to use black. And you know, straight lines can be tricky. <laughs> That's why I like to use a ruler because I get picky about crooked lines. Um, I'm pretty good about drawing straight lines over straight lines I've already made. So for right now, I'm just going to color in these vertical bars because we are going to add the little film uh, strip rectangles in between. So some of you might just be watching. Some of you might be trying this with me, which is wonderful. Ooh, see this line here? It's a little thinner than my bottom bar. So that's why pencil might be helpful to you. Um, you know, you can just erase it and redo it. So I'm gonna make this bar a little bit thicker here. So I'm gonna outline that as well. And then I'm gonna color in some other rectangles. And I'm going to freehand this. You can measure these out too if you want. But you can see now it's looking more and more like a film strip. Like I had in my other journal that I showed you. And now I'm ready for a heading. And I, you know, would add multiple strips down under this. And I think of red for movies sometimes because of the popcorn boxes and the drinks and the Coca-Cola and all that. So I'm gonna do my heading in red. And I'm gonna write movies to C. So I like combining different types of handwriting. So I have cursive here, but then I also have some print. So that is what your Movies to See page might look like. I think that's all I'm going to show you today. But hopefully you'll come up with some awesome lists of your own and share them with me. So I'm going to stop my video.
and I am going to thank you for being here and watching this demonstration and presentation on bullet journaling. And I hope that you let me know of any questions you might have. You can email me at grace.engelbrecht at libraryweb.org. You can comment under this video, whether it's on the Facebook comments or the, the YouTube comment, or you can give us a call and talk to me more about it. So I hope that you enjoyed this and it was helpful to you. And I would love to see some pictures of what you come up with. Have a great day.